Hi, I'm Dr. Ken Ben Muller. And on behalf of my co-authors, I would like to highlight some technical points about creating a EUS guided gastroenterostomy using a oral enteric catheter assisted technique. So I'm going to abbreviate uh, oral enteric catheter uh, OEC. And for this procedure, we use a 15 millimeter LAMBS lumen opposing metal stent. A LAMBS is a anastomotic stent. It was designed to create a transluminal anastomosis between a lumen outside the gastrointestinal tract and the GI tract lumen, in this case, the stomach. Now the application for creating a gastroenterostomy presents several very unique challenges. And the first is visualization. A small bowel is often filled with some air and that air creates echogenic artifact. It makes ultrasound visualization difficult. In addition, the small bowel is very mobile. It is constantly contracting and shifting its position. And there are multiple loops of small bowel. How do we know that the loop of small bowel that we see is that segment that we want to target for our gastroenterostomy? The lumen of the small bowel also is limited in diameter to just a couple of centimeters. So we're going to need to dilate that lumen or distend it to place a LAMS. And we need a runway of about three and a half centimeters to be sure that the distal flange is deployed fully inside the lumen and not outside of the small bowel. So placement of an OEC prior to creation of the gastroenterostomy addresses these challenges. So we start the procedure with the gastroscope. And through the channel of the gastroscope, we place an oral enteric catheter downstream from the obstruction into the small bowel. And we will place that over a guide wire because we need the guide wire to straighten out the pigtail end of the OEC. We can place that OEC up to the level of the proximal jejunum. If we're not able to get through the stricture with our scope, then we'll do that under fluoroscopic guidance. Then we remove the gastroscope, leaving the OEC in place. Next, we insert our therapeutic curved linear ray echoendoscope alongside the OEC, pass it to the mid body of the stomach. And now we start our ultrasound exam, looking for the targeted loop of small bowel. And we can assist that search for the desired loop with a fluoroscopy. And through the OEC, we can inject contrast. So this allows us to confirm that our echo endoscope is in proximity to the desired targeted loop of small bowel. And we can see the OEC on ultrasound very well because it is echogenic. The next step is to create the gastroenterostomy. We need a lumen diameter of at least three and a half centimeters. So with rapid infusion, of fluid into the small bowel, and a water pump is best used for this, we can achieve that distension, and we can also remove any air bubbles that may be impeding our visualization. Once we have the desired lumen diameter, then we can use the electrocautery enhanced delivery system to gain access to the small bowel and immediately deploy the distal flange of our LAMS. This is a one device, one step technique. It minimizes any risk of leak because the sheath itself will plug up or seal off the perforation that we've created into the small bowel. There is no over the wire exchange. After the LAMS is deployed, we can dilate the lumen of the lambs 
then we can actually drive a scope afterwards through the lambs into the afferent and efferent limbs of the small bowel. So we have used this standardized technique over the past four years. We've treated 42 consecutive patients. In all patients, we could successfully insert the OEC to the proximal jejunum. And we were able to deploy the lambs successfully in all but one patient. On follow-up, symptoms of gastric outlet obstruction resolved in all but three patients. Of 28 surviving patients, the mean duration of symptom relief, the ability to maintain oral intake, was 5.4 months. Adverse events occurred in three patients. One was due to a malfunction of the uh, lambs. Uh, so this was a device issue. And we had two lambs occlusions that required replacement of the lambs. So we had no serious adverse events. We have used this method and this protocol consistently over the past four years. Uh, a gastroenterostomy has now replaced placement of a tubular uh, stent for the treatment of gastric outlet obstruction in our uh, practice. And we believe that EOS guided gastroenterostomy will replace tubular duodenal stent placement in the future. Thank you.